Section 8.3 describes covalent bonding. Where does covalent bonding fit into the scheme of things? Let's go ahead and do a quick review. I have ionic compounds, I have molecular compounds. In ionic compounds, I have ionic bonds. In molecular compounds, I have covalent bonds. Okay, a little bit more of a review. What do ionic compounds look like? They are crystalline structures. I'm taking you back all the way to chapter 3. On page 88, figure 3.7 has a great picture to illustrate what an ionic compound looks like. Here's a crystalline structure. The electrostatic forces in ionic bonding keep this structure together. There is a high melting and high boiling point for ionic compounds. Now let's talk about molecular compounds. Here are two examples of molecular compounds. I have elemental oxygen and I have CO2. Now molecular compounds have lower melting and boiling points, but why? The interaction between the middle carbon and the two oxygens on either side, the bond there is very, very strong. But if you have an entire bucket of CO2, let's go ahead and illustrate. Okay, here's my imaginary big bucket of CO2. Okay, so I have four molecules of CO2. Now the covalent bonds between the oxygen and the carbon here and the oxygen and carbon here, that bond right there and that bond right there are very strong. But the interaction between this molecule and this molecule, there's not a bond there. There's not a large interaction there. That is why molecular compounds traditionally have a lower melting and boiling point compared to ionic compounds. So the covalent bond is between the two atoms in a molecular compound. So let me go ahead and illustrate. For example, if we have hydrogen and we have fluorine in a molecular compound, the covalent bond exists between them. So hydrogen fluoride has a bond connecting the hydrogen and the fluorine atom. Now how do we draw that or how do we represent that? That's where Lewis dot structures come into play. Let's go ahead and review what Lewis dot structures are. On page 294 in your textbook, you'll see table 8.3. The electron configuration is mentioned first, then valence electrons, and then the Lewis symbol. So we are looking at the second row in the periodic table. So real quick, we are looking at this row right here. Here's my lithium, beryllium, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and neon. So let's specifically look at carbon. Here's my electron configuration. I know carbon has four valence electrons. Another way to think about that is by looking at the periodic table, carbon needs one, two, three, four electrons to look like neon. The Lewis symbol looks like this. Now why don't we draw the Lewis symbol with all the electrons on one side? We don't draw the Lewis symbol of carbon like this because electrons repel each other. The correct Lewis symbol is going to have the electrons as far apart from each other as possible. The carbon Lewis symbol looks like this. Since we're speaking of covalent bonding that occurs in molecular compounds, we don't need to talk about the metals. So we will be focusing on the non-metals. The tendency of an atom to achieve an electron configuration with eight valence electrons or an electron configuration similar to a noble gas is called the octet rule. Let's take a look at carbon again. Carbon needs to gain four electrons to have eight valence electrons in its outermost energy level. Nitrogen needs three, oxygen needs two, fluorine needs one, and neon already is a noble gas. So carbon is likely to form four bonds, nitrogen is likely to form three, oxygen is likely to form two, and fluorine is likely to form one bond. 
Now in each bond, there are two electrons involved. I'm going to illustrate how to draw hydrogen fluoride. You first need to start with the Lewis symbols of the atoms you're dealing with. So in hydrogen fluoride, we have hydrogen. We also have the fluorine atom. It has seven valence electrons. Now hydrogen only needs two valence electrons in its outermost shell to be stable. That is an exception to the octet rule. Fluorine, however, is like a normal atom and it needs eight to be stable to have that electron configuration that is similar to a noble gas. So how will these combine and how do I draw the Lewis dot structure? To draw the Lewis dot structure, you'll combine them like this. So now hydrogen thinks that it has two electrons. It brings one to the compound, but it will borrow or share one of fluorines. So hydrogen is taken care of. What about fluorine? Fluorine now also thinks it has eight because it is sharing one of hydrogen's electrons. So it also is stable. The covalent bond happens between the hydrogen and the fluorine and there are two electrons in that covalent bond. You can also simplify this Lewis dot structure by taking these two electrons and just drawing a single line between the hydrogen and the fluorine to represent a single bond. A single bond has two electrons. It looks like this. Here's my bond representing the two electrons. And so fluorine has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it is stable. And my hydrogen has one, two, has two electrons. There is my Lewis dot structure for hydrogen fluoride. What do the Lewis dot structures look like for the diatomic elements? Now just a reminder, the diatomic elements are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. There are seven diatomic elements and you can remember that by drawing a seven right here and then remembering that hydrogen is included. I'm going to show you the Lewis dot structure for each of the diatomic elements. Let's start with hydrogen. Hydrogen is H2. That means there are two hydrogens involved. The individual Lewis symbol is this for hydrogen and there are two of them. How will they combine? Well, the electrons will be in between them. They form the covalent bond. I'm going to represent this one with blue, and I'm going to represent this with black. So this hydrogen has two electrons. This hydrogen has two electrons. So they're both stable. We can simplify the Lewis dot structure by simply drawing a line to represent that bond, because a line represents two electrons in a bond. This is the most simplified Lewis dot structure. Nitrogen is my next diatomic. The Lewis symbol looks like this. Nitrogen needs three additional electrons to achieve that octet, right? The most stable electron configuration is that of a noble gas, so nitrogen still needs those three electrons to achieve eight in its outermost shell. The other nitrogen looks the same as this. How will they combine? Nitrogen will actually form a triple bond. So this nitrogen believes it has eight. This nitrogen also is stable with eight. How would you simplify that picture? Because that looks pretty messy. You can simplify it by this. There is the Lewis dot structure for elemental nitrogen. What about the diatomic element of oxygen? The Lewis symbol for one oxygen atom looks like this. And if I have two of those, how will they combine? Well, oxygen only needs two more electrons to achieve an octet, so oxygen will form a double bond. This oxygen believes it has eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This oxygen also believes it has eight. What is the cleaned up version of the Lewis dot structure here? It should look like this. The double bond is in between the two oxygens, and each of them believes 
that they have eight because one of these lines represents two electrons. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This also believes it has eight. What about fluorine? And if we have two of them, they will combine by a single bond because fluorine only needs one additional electron to achieve that octet. So there will just be a single bond between the two fluorine atoms. First, that fluorine believes it has eight, and this fluorine also believes it has eight. This can be drawn like this. Now the rest of the diatomics are in the column with fluorine, so they also have the same structure. Chlorine, bromine, and iodine are in the same column with fluorine, and so the diatomics bond very similarly to fluorine. They have the same structure, or the same Lewis dot structure.